Let's listen in. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. What a glorious day. I am Michelle Demanuel, the Secretary of the Cabinet, Clerk of the Executive Council, and the head of our Ontario Public Service. It is my absolute pleasure to welcome you to the swearing All right, in ceremony. All uh, right, while we wait for this Executive to officially Council. get underway, the swearing in, the swearing in I ceremony, like I want to quickly bring I in uh, Lydia Miljohn. She is a political science, science professor. Uh, professor, just have you talk over these pictures, if you will, for a moment. What are we expecting to hear from the Premier today, and what do you think this cabinet's going to look like? That's the big question. I mean, obviously, it's going to be a little bit different uh, cabinet simply because a number of his previous cabinet ministers didn't run for re-election. I'm thinking specifically about Christine Elliott, who was the former Minister of Health. So that's a big file um, that a lot of people are speculating about who might potentially be the next cabinet minister. It also looks like it's a slightly bigger um a cabinet, at least from the seats that were numbered on the ground, there's 29 and his previous cabinet was 28. Um, and so there's some speculation about, you know, just a, a little bit increase, but he does have a bigger um, number of people to work with. And I think that he does want to bring in some new people, especially um, here in southwestern Ontario. We have new uh, MP, two new MPPs, and I think that is expectation uh, that one of them will, will make it to cabinet this time. What does the Premier look for in people who become cabinet ministers and in advance of the decision today? Are prospects putting up their hands and, you know, selling themselves to the Premier and to his staff? Well, he made it very clear he did not want to hear from from candidates. He did not want to hear from their people. He basically said, don't call me, I'll call you. Um, ultimately, you know, he's got to still strike a balance with, for some sort of regional representation. He want, And he has... Um, the luxury of choice, right? He he does have representation throughout the province. He's got rural, he's got urban, so he can, you know, sort of craft that cabinet to, to hit all those things. But then I think he also wants to have certain uh, qualities and characteristics. Obviously, you want competence. You want people who who are able to deal with the files that they're given. Uh, but also, I think he'll probably want to have some kind of EDI lens. Probably not to the extent as the federal government under the Liberals. I don't think his mandate is so much in terms of gender balance. But I think he'll want to have representation from people with visible minorities, and he'll want to have women in his cabinet. Um, and so it is a, a tricky balancing act that a premier or, or any leader has to do when they're forming these types of governments. Okay, okay uh, Lydia, stay tight because we're now getting some of the names of the new cabinet members, and I'm just going to read them. I'm doing this cold, so bear with me here. Um, I just have to... All right, here are some of the newly announced ministers in Ontario. Sylvia Jones is now the deputy premier, as well as the health minister. Of course, that role was previously held by Christine Elliott. Doug Downey is taking over as attorney general. Peter Bethanavi remains as finance minister. Stephen Lecce stays on as education minister. Carolyn Mulrooney remains transportation minister. 
Paul Calandra is the long-term care minister. Michael Ford, Doug Ford's nephew, is the new minister of citizenship and multiculturalism. Out of cabinet is Lisa McLeod. In total now, the cabinet has 30 members, so they have gained two. The cabinet was 28 before. Now we're up to 30. So, Lydia, uh, let's begin with your base reaction to Christine Elliott's replacement. This is going to be Sylvia Jones. She's going to be the deputy premier, as well as taking on that big portfolio of health. Yeah, so that's, that's, I think, a good choice. I mean, he has somebody who's seasoned, uh, who, who's had um, important portfolios in the past and obviously has been able to hold on to those and really been elevated now to deputy premier and health minister. Tells you that uh, he has a lot of faith in Sylvia Jones and also that he really wants to ensure that there's a strong hand moving forward. I do find it interesting that he's kept a number of those cabinet positions, in particular finance. So, so that does signal that they want to um, probably reintroduce, if not the same, a very similar um, piece of um, a type budget um, coming up. So, you know, for Sylvia Jones to be former Solicitor General to now to be Health Minister, I think is really important for her. And if you believe the rumors, uh, one person who might be slightly disappointed is Stephen Lecce, who apparently wanted to move on from education. He wanted to take on um, a new role in the cabinet, but uh, no, he's staying where he is. He's staying put. Well, Doug Ford really likes him in education. In fact, I, I think it was during the debate talking about how wonderful Stephen Lecce was as the best um, education minister he could ever hope for. So I guess Lecce uh, got that endorsement early on, and um, uh, he's probably, um, even though he might want to have moved on, the, the premier obviously wants him to stay in that file. And it is an important file, um, and I don't think that it, this is a time to be switching um, ministers. Uh, they, they obviously had huge challenges with COVID, doing hybrid, doing online learning. And, um, you know, I think parents, I, I mean, obviously it's a very divisive issue and, and some parents weren't happy with him. Um, but I think for, for Doug Ford, he wants to ensure that he has um, this, the same person at the, hand, at the helm of that file. Yeah, he's got the continuity there. And sometimes the boss has different ideas. <laughs> you got to go with the boss. Uh, Carolyn Mulrooney, remaining in transportation. Yes, I mean she she started off as attorney general and was shuffled into transportation, uh, and there was some indication that she might be moved uh, shuffled as well. But you know transportation is also a really big file that the, the Doug Ford government um, and the and the PC party had campaigned hard on in the last election campaign. So infrastructure, especially transportation infrastructure, was key to their mandate, and there are a number of big files that she's working on uh, on that. So it makes sense that he would want to continue with the same minister, especially when the, all those controversial, um, you know, shovels in the ground have to have to get going. And so it, it makes sense that you have somebody who is very familiar with that post. And I don't really know if she was unhappy in that position or if she wanted to stay. But again, uh, if the boss wants you to stay, you stay. Paul Calandra um, in long term care. What's the task ahead for him? That is, an, I mean, there are so many challenges that we've seen because of COVID. Um, Long-term care is especially fraught just because that's where the majority of the fatalities and, and just the, the biggest impact of COVID was on long-term care. And so we recognize that it has been underfunded for a long time. And I think that they have to decide, you know, which way they want to move forward. Obviously, the NDP were advocating that it go completely public funded. And so... Obviously, this government um, doesn't buy into that. They do see a role for the private sector. But, the, but you know, long-term care has to deal with the fact that how do you ensure that long-term care homes have not just the staffing that's required, but also the facilities that are required to keep not just the, the, uh, the residents safe, but also engaged and happy and living fulfilled lives. Okay, and I also wanted to get your take on Michael Ford, Doug Ford's nephew, being named the new Minister of Citizenship and Multiculturalism. 
Yeah, so this one's going to be probably the most controversial, and I, I've seen already social media chatter about how this is, you know, nepotism, and um, and so I don't, I don't know if it looks good on the government so much because he's, he does really seem to be, you know, favoring his own uh, family members. But nonetheless, uh, Michael Ford has been duly elected, um, and so he's going to have he's given a shot by his uncle, and uh, I think though that. Not only will the focus be on him, uh, but if he makes any mistakes, I think the pressure on Doug Ford to turf him out will be that much greater. So there's going to be a high, that's a high stakes appointment. And, um, and really, it's it's Michael Ford's to lose. Speaking of pressure, Lisa McLeod was under a lot of it. She's the only person now out of cabinet. And I think that's a good call. You know, she she struggled. She struggled in all her files. Um, she has very. She just didn't do well as a communicator. And I think that's the other thing that I didn't talk about. You know, when he asked, "What do you look for in a in a good minister?" You need really good communicators. You need people to articulate the message, especially when it isn't what people want to hear. And so the the Ford government really took a lot of hits, especially when Lisa McLeod was handling the file on how autism funding. Um, and so she you know, rightly or wrongly, she's the one that took the brunt of that criticism. And she just never really performed well. And so it's not surprising that she um, has been left out of this cabinet. Okay, I'm just going to quickly, Lydia, thanks for that, just uh, recap some of these major ministers that we're learning about today. The headline, Sylvia Jones is now the Deputy Premier as well as the Health Minister in Ontario. That was a role previously held by Christine Elliott, who decided not to run again um, in this summer's election uh, a month or so ago. Doug Downey is taking over as Attorney General. Peter Bethlenavalvi is remaining as finance minister. Stephen Lecce stays on as education minister. There were some reports that he had wanted to move on to another position in cabinet. However, the premier likes him where he is. So Stephen Lecce is staying on in education. Carolyn Mulrooney staying on in transportation. Okay. Paul Calandra remains on as the long-term care minister. And Michael Ford, Doug Ford's nephew, is the new minister of citizenship and multiculturalism. Lisa McLeod is the only person out of Ford's cabinet. The cabinet now has two new members. Uh, it's now 30 members, up from 28. Let's take you back to Queen's Park, uh, get a bit of that sound as we were listening to the Lieutenant Governor. And any moment, we're also going to be hearing from Premier Doug Ford. Let's listen. Here's Queen's Park. On June 2nd, the voters of Ontario decided that you, the executive councillors, and your fellow parliamentarians will together form the 43rd Parliament of Ontario. As Lieutenant Governor of Ontario, I offer my warm congratulations. En tant que le Lieutenant Gouverneur, je vous offre mes félicitations. This morning, the Honourable Mr. Ford, as Premier, advised me of his intentions for the composition of the Executive Council. And very shortly, in my capacity as the Queen's representative in Ontario, I will formally approve them. As Ministers of the Crown, you will continue to advise me in the exercise of my constitutional powers and legal duties. And in turn, you will be accountable to the Legislative Assembly and through its members to the people of this province. It is now up to you to earn their trust and confidence. The swearing-in of a government is therefore not an occasion for pageantry. Instead, we are focused this morning on the simple, straightforward, and deeply significant oaths that you will swear and reaffirm to be faithful, to be honest, and on the responsibility that you bear to people who have entrusted you with the legislative tools to tackle the daunting challenge we face. Ontarians will be watching you with great investment and with trust that you will use these tools to the best of your ability to bring about an even brighter future for all. In this time of great potential for renewal, 
may you be guided by the words on the Great Seal of Ontario, Sapera Audi, the words meaning dare to be wise, and by the motto on the coat of arms on, of the Assembly, Audi Alterum Partem, hear the other side. And you may as well be inspired by Her Majesty the Queen, to whom you are, spare, are swearing allegiance today. This year we celebrate her Platinum Jubilee, marking an extraordinary 70 years of steadfast service to Canada and the Commonwealth. Mr. Ford, you are the 11th Premier to serve during Her Majesty's reign. I wish you and your fellow members of Cabinet a most successful ministry. And I now invite the Secretary of the Cabinet and the Clerk of the Executive Council to proceed with administering the prescribed oaths. Thank you, Your Honour. Before we move on to the administration of the oaths, we will have the presentation of the Premier's recommendation document that Her Honour spoke of. Earlier today, the Lieutenant Governor had the opportunity to meet with the Premier to receive formal advice on the appointments of the members of the Executive, Council and Ministers responsible for various portfolios. Her Honour has indicated her intent to sign the recommended documentation this document formally signifies her acceptance of the recommendations put forward by the Premier for the membership and portfolios on the Executive Council of the Province of Ontario. I will now present the recommended recommendation document to Her Honour for her signature. Thank you, Your Honour. We will now proceed with the rest of the formal elements of this ceremony. I will first call upon Premier Doug Ford to come forward and reaffirm his oath as Premier of Ontario. Thank you, Michelle. I, Doug Ford, swear that I will duly and, and faithfully acknowledge the executive powers and trust reposed in me as Premier and President of the Council and Minister of Intergovernmental Affairs of the Province of Ontario. So help me God. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, Premier. I will now administer the oath of allegiance and, uh, and members of the Executive Council to the ministers as a group. Then, each minister will come forward to take their oaths of office. Following the administration of the oaths, Her Honour will entrust the Great Seal 
to the Minister of Public and Business Service Delivery. I would now like to ask all the members of the Executive Council to please stand for the Oath of Allegiance and Member of the Executive Council. I will read the oath on behalf of the Ministers. I do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty, Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law. I swear to the best of my ability I will serve honestly and faithfully as a member of Her Majesty's Executive Council in the province of Ontario. I will be vigilant, diligent, and circumspect in the performance of my duties. I will speak my mind in Council openly and honestly without partiality, fear, or favour. I will respect as secret all matters that may be discussed by the Executive Council in arriving at a decision of the Council and not disclose outside the Council any fact pertaining to such matters. I will not discuss the decisions of the Executive Council outside the Council without the consent of the Executive Council, provided that I may discuss such decisions with members of my ministry staff if I deem it advisable. I will not disclose to any person outside the Executive Council any discussions or decisions related to conduct of a member of the Executive Council. Ministers, please now signify your acceptance by saying, either so help me God or I affirm. Thank you, Ministers. Please be seated. I will now call forward the members of the Executive Council of Ontario in order of precedence to swear their oaths of office. Sylvia Jones becomes Minister of Health. In addition, Minister Jones is appointed Deputy Premier. I ask Minister Jones to please come forward. I, Sylvia Jones, swear that I will duly and faithfully and to the best of my skill and knowledge execute the powers and trusts reposed in me as Deputy Premier and Minister of Health in the province of Ontario. So help me God. Congratulations again, Minister Jones. Victor Fidelli returns as Minister of Economic Development, Job Creation and Trade. In addition, Minister Fidelli returns as Chair of Cabinet. I would ask Minister Fidelli to come forward and take his oath. I, Victor Fidelli, swear that I will duly and faithfully and to the best of my skill and knowledge, execute the powers and trust reposed in me as Minister of Economic Development, Job Creation and Trade of the Province of Ontario. So help me God.
Congratulations again, Ms. Minister Fideli. Steve Clark returns as Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. I ask M Minister Clark to please come forward to take his oath. I, Steve Clark, swear that I will duly and faithfully, to the best of my skill and knowledge, execute the powers and trust reposed in me as Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing of the Province of Ontario. So help me God. Congratulations again, Minister. Monty McNaughton becomes Minister of Labour, Immigration, Training and Skills Development. I ask Minister McNaughton to please come forward to take his oath. I, Monty Gary McNaughton, swear that I will duly and faithfully and to the best of my skill and knowledge, execute the powers and trusts reposed in me as Minister of Labour, Immigration, Training and Skills Development of the Province of Ontario. So help me God. Again, congratulations, Minister. Todd Smith returns as Minister of Energy. I ask Minister Smith to please come forward to take his oath. I, Todd Andrew Smith, swear that I will duly and faithfully, to the best of my skill and knowledge, execute the powers and trusts reposed in me as Minister of Energy of the Province of Ontario, so help me God. Again, congratulations, Minister Smith. Lisa Thompson returns as Minister of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs. I would ask Minister Thompson to please come forward to take her oath. Okay. 
right. Flip to yellow sheet. Got it. <laughs> I, Lisa Marguerite Thompson, swear that I will duly and faithfully, and to the best of my skill and knowledge, execute the powers and trusts reposed in me as the Minister of Agriculture, Food, and Rural Affairs for the province of Ontario. So help me God. Congratulations again, Minister. Raymond Cho returns as Minister for Seniors and Accessibility. I, Raymond Sungju Cho, swear that I will duly and faithfully, and to the best of my skill and knowledge, execute the powers and trust reposed in me. As the Minister for Seniors and Accessibility of the province of Ontario, so help me God. Thank you, Minister Cho. Peter Bethenfalvi returns as our Minister of Finance. I, Peter Anthony Edmund Bethenfalvi, swear that I will du duly and faithfully, and to the best of my skill and knowledge, execute the power and trust reposed as me, in me as Minister of Finance of the Province of Ontario. Je, Peter Bethamfold, jure d'utiliser fidèlement et consciencieusement les pouvoirs et les confiances qui me sont dévolus de and the trust that have been reposed in me. To the best of my abilities and knowledge, the position that I have been entrusted as Minister of Finance. This is for the province of Ontario. So help me God. Thank you.
Congratulations again, Minister. Paul Calandra returns as Minister of Long-Term Care and as a Minister of Legislative Affairs. In addition, Minister Calandra returns as the Government House Leader. I would ask the Minister to come forward to take his oath. I, Paul Anthony Calandra, swear that I will duly and faithfully, and to the best of my skill and knowledge, execute the powers and trust reposed in me as Minister of Long-Term Care and Minister of Legislative Affairs of the Province of Ontario. So help me God. Congratulations again, Minister Calandra. Doug Downey returns as the Attorney General. I'd ask Minister Downey to come forward. I, Douglas Downey, swear that I will duly and faithfully and to the best of my skill and knowledge execute the powers and trusts reposed in me as Attorney General of the Province of Ontario, so help me God. Congratulations again, Minister Downey. Jill Dunlop returns as Minister of Colleges and Universities. I, Jill Dunlop, swear that I will duly and faithfully, and to the best of my skill and knowledge, execute the powers and trusts reposed in me as Minister of Colleges and Universities for the Province of Ontario. So help me God. Congratulations, Minister. Mary Lee Fullerton returns as Minister of Children, Community and Social Services. I, Mary Lee K. Fullerton, swear that I will duly and faithfully and to the best of my skill and knowledge 
execute the powers and trusts reposed in me as Minister of Children, Community and Social Services of the Province of Ontario. So help me God. Okay, if you're just joining us, we are watching the swearing in of Ontario Premier Doug Ford's next cabinet, most notably today. Sylvia Jones has been named the Deputy Premier and the Minister of Health, replacing Christine Elliott, who did not run in the last election. We're going to continue to watch this play out at Queen's Park in Toronto. As well, straight ahead, more coverage of the breaking news from Washington this morning. The Supreme Court, after 50 years, overturning Roe v. Wade. I'm Marcia McMillan. Jennifer Burke is going to be here momentarily. Again, we'll continue to watch the swearing-in ceremony of Ontario Premier Doug Ford's cabinet. Thank you, Minister Fullerton. Congratulations. Parm Gill becomes Minister of Red Tape Reduction. I, Parmjeet Singh Gill, solemnly affirm that I will duly and faithfully, and to the best of my skill and knowledge, execute the powers and trust reposed in me as the Minister of Red Tape Reduction of the Province of Ontario. So help me God. Congratulations, Minister. Stephen Lecce returns as Minister of Education. I'd ask the Minister to please come forward. I, Stephen Francis Lecce, swear that I will duly and faithfully and to the best of my skill and knowledge execute the powers and trust reposed in me as Minister of Education of the Province of Ontario. So help me God. Thank you, Minister Lecce. Caroline Mulroney returns as Minister of Transportation and Minister of Francophone Affairs. I'd ask Minister Mulroney to come forward. Je, Caroline Anne Mulroney. I, Caroline Ann Mulroney, swear that I will use, to the best of my skill and knowledge, the powers and trust reposed in me 
les fonctions qui me sont confiées à titre de ministre des Transports et ministre des Affaires francophones de la province de l'Ontario. Je, Caroline Ann Mulroney, swear that I will duly and faithfully, and to the best of my skill and knowledge, execute the powers and trusts reposed in me as Minister of Transportation and Minister of Francophone Affairs of the province of Ontario. So help me God, ainsi Dieu me soit en aide. Congratulations again, Minister Mulroney. David Puccini returns as Minister of Environment, Conservation and Parks. I, David Windsor Puccini, swear that I will duly and faithfully and to the best of my skill and knowledge execute the powers and trusts reposed in me as Minister of the Environment, Conservation and Parks of the Province of Ontario, so help me God. Congratulations again, Minister Puccini. Khalid Rashid becomes Minister of Public and Business Service Delivery. I'd ask Minister Rashid to come forward. I, Khalid Rashid, swear that I will duly and faithfully, and to the best of my skill and knowledge, execute the powers and trust reposed in me as Minister of Public and Business Service Delivery of the Province of Ontario. So help me God. Congratulations, Minister. Greg Rickford becomes Minister of Northern Development and Minister Rickford returns as Minister of Indigenous Affairs. I would ask Minister Rickford to please come forward to take his oath.
I, David Gregory Rickford, solemnly affirm that I will duly and faithfully and to the best of my skill and knowledge execute the powers and trust reposed in me as the Minister of Northern Development and as the Minister of Indigenous Affairs of the Province of Ontario. Thank you. Congratulations, Minister Rickford. Prabhmeet Sakaria returns as President of the Treasury Board. I would ask Minister Sakaria to please come forward. I, Prabhbeet Singh Sarkaria, solemnly affirm that I will duly and faithfully, and to the best of my skill and knowledge, execute the powers and trusts reposed in me as a President of the Treasury Board of the Province of Ontario. Thank you. Congratulations again, Minister Sakaria. Kinga Surma returns as Minister of Infrastructure. I'd ask Minister Surma to please come forward and take her oath of office. I, Kinga Surma, swear that I will duly and faithfully, and to the best of my skill and knowledge, execute the powers and trusts reposed in me as the Minister of Infrastructure of the Province of Ontario. So help me God. Again, congratulations, Minister Surma. Michael Ford becomes Minister of Citizenship and Multiculturalism. I'd ask Minister Ford to please come forward. I, Michael Douglas Ford, swear that I will duly and faithfully, and to the best of my skill and knowledge, 
execute the powers and trust reposed in me as Minister of Citizen Citizenship and Multiculturalism for the province of Ontario. So help me God. Thank you, Minister Ford. Michael Kersner becomes Solicitor General. I'd ask Minister Kersner to please come forward to take your oath. I, Michael Sean Kersner, swear that I will duly and faithfully and to the best of my skill and knowledge, execute the powers and trusts reposed in me as Solicitor General of the Province of Ontario. So help me God. All right, thank you for tuning in to CTV News Channel. I want to tell you what we're watching on this very busy day in news. As you can see in the corner box there, Roe v. Wade has been overturned by the U.S. Supreme Court. We will get to that story and have extensive coverage of that throughout the course of the day. But of course, a busy day for Ontario politics as well. Ontario Premier Doug Ford announcing his new 30 person cabinet including Sylvia Jones as Deputy Premier and Health Minister. Now, many of the Cabinet Ministers remain in the same portfolios they held during Ford's last government, but there are some new faces in Cabinet, including Doug Ford's nephew, Michael Ford. You just saw him uh, take the oath. He is named Minister of Citizenship and Multiculturalism. Let's bring in CTV's Queen's Park reporter, Siobhan Morris, who joins me now. Siobhan, uh, we talked about how the Health Ministry obviously would be allocated to someone new since uh, the last Health Minister was not returning, uh, but tell us about some of these other changes and if you are surprised by any of them. I don't know that there are any big surprises other than maybe to see Michael Ford uh, get a cabinet post so early on. I think we, we are seeing both some continuity here, some uh, especially in key portfolios uh, like education, like transportation. We heard obviously the government talk a lot about building major highway projects in, in the recent election, so it makes sense to have some continuity there. There are the, some new faces in places we were kind of expecting. Some places where uh, the PCs won seats in where they haven't in a long time. So uh, we saw the the PC candidate who won in Timmins. He gets a portfolio looking at mining and developing the Ring of Fire. He's a former uh, mining executive, so that makes sense. One that also makes sense is that uh, in a Hamilton riding, Neil Lumsden, uh, former CFL player, he gets the portfolio of tourism and sports. So th these are changes that make sense uh, with the addition of those new faces. Sure. Um, Lisa McLeod. Well, the only cabinet minister shuffled out in, in, in uh, to make room for, for the new minister that you just talked about. Why would that be? Do we have any uh, inside information on that? I don't know exactly, but I mean, Lisa McLeod, her, I guess, time in this government has been, I think, a difficult one. She was removed from a cabinet post handling uh, children's services, and it was really felt that she had bungled the autism file, really rose the ire of a lot of uh, families with children with autism, and was moved into tourism. And, and it wasn't entirely without scandal in that post either. So I think it just enough was enough uh, at this point, and that's the reason we're seeing her out of cabinet today. Sure. Uh, also, Stephen Lecce retains his, his education portfolio. 
portfolio. And that was controversial only in that the, the word was, Siobhan, that he didn't want to return as education minister, but he got such a ringing endorsement from the premier uh, that it's, it, you know, clearly he's back in the portfolio. And a big round of applause when, when it was announced here uh, that he stepped up to the microphone to take his oath again as education minister. The thought is that maybe, you know, they keep him in this portfolio to get through the next little while. While we're going through a, a time where uh, teachers' contracts and education union contracts will be renegotiated, and maybe after that is done, there'll be room for a discussion about moving him into another post. But again, if you're doing a good, good job, uh, even if you're not happy doing it, maybe the government wants to keep you where you are. What will be the biggest challenges facing this new cabinet? I think it's it's the sort of changing economic picture that we're seeing. A lot has changed since they introduced their budget at the end of April, just, a, you know, really not that long ago. But that uh, budget was really predicated on us being in a, a time of economic prosperity. The government talks so much in that budget and in the campaign about uh, we us being uh, in prosperity, adding jobs, adding higher wages. And now with the possibility of a recession on the horizon, I think that discussion becomes a little different. So it will be interesting to see how that affects the bottom line of the province and whether they change course on some of their promises or plans with that picture changing.